Okay, so in the last video, we took some time to understand how we could take a force that is in space, that is a 3D force, and how we could break that force up into its components along the X, the Z, and the Y axes. So in this video, I wanna take a look at some of the special angles that we used in the previous videos, and those angles were these direction angles, and I want to help sort of visualize them because these angles sometimes can be hard to see. So in this video, I really want to show you where these angles are oriented from. And then we'll talk about a byproduct of those angles when we find these force components. And that is the direction cosines. Okay, so here I've drawn my X, Y, and Z coordinate system. And I've drawn this force from the origin out to some point here in space and in blue i've drawn this box to sort of help you visualize that this force is not just in the xy plane but it is in fact three-dimensional it has a force component in the x a force component in the y and a force component in the z axis and so this force i will label as f and in previous videos, we found that F is equal to the Fx uh, scalar quantity uh, times the unit vector i plus Fy times the unit vector j plus Fz times the unit vector k. And also, we've said that F of x, the scalar quantity F of x, is equal to the magnitude of F times this cosine of theta x. So this is not just regular theta, it is theta sub x. And similarly, we said that f of y was equal to f times the cosine of theta y. And then we said f of z is equal to f times the cosine of theta z. Now, so far, we are familiar with that theta x, theta y, and theta z values, these values right here are what we call our direction angles. Now these direction angles are plugged into these cosine functions uh, for all three of these components. And so these terms right here, cosine of theta x, cosine of theta y, and cosine of theta z, those are what we call our direction cosines. Okay, so let's go back to these direction angles for a minute here, and let's look at this diagram uh, right here for this force vector F. We know that our direction angles are the angles that this force vector makes from the positive axis to the force vector. So for an example, delta, I'm sorry, theta x is gonna be the angle that this force vector makes from the positive x axis. So theta x is going to be right there. That is theta x. However, that's hard to see. So in order to visualize theta x a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from this corner right here all the way down to the positive x axis. And you can sort of see that when I draw that line, you can see this plane being made that's off at an angle. And this plane right here is where our theta x value resides. And again, visualizing this stuff in 3D can be a little bit challenging, so I urge you to just take a second and really try to understand this yellow plane right here. So this plane that we've made, that is the plane in which our theta x is acting in. Now we can do the same thing to see where uh, theta y is acting in. So I'm gonna go ahead and from the tip of that force factor all the way to the y axis, I'm gonna draw another line. And this line, if you can sort of see, this yellow line and then down the y axis and then up the force factor, that makes another plane. And so that plane is going to be this plane right there. And this plane is where theta y is oriented in. So that is theta y. And so you can sort of see that this plane, this yellow plane, makes a certain angle uh, with the x-axis. It's, it's, it's turned a little bit. So if you can imagine, 
If you can imagine the hinges or the edge of a door and this door is closed and then you open it a little bit, uh, it's gonna look like this. So that yellow plane is the door, this is the hinge and we're rotating that door, we're opening it by some angle here. And so theta y is gonna be the angle that this uh, force vector f makes with the hinge of that door within this yellow plane. Okay, awesome. So now let's go ahead and do our last uh, theta direction angle, and that is theta z. So again, I'm gonna draw another line from the tip of f all the way down to this corner of the box. And now this one's a little hard to see, but you're essentially staring into the page and it's at a slope that's pretty equivalent to eye level. And so the plane is gonna be this plane right here. And it's a little hard to see, but this plane, this triangular plane that the force vector makes and that yellow line makes, that is the plane that delta or theta z is acting in. So theta z is acting in that plane and I'm gonna go ahead and remove that yellow shading so that we can see this angle a little bit more clearly. So if I zoom in here, theta z, this is the z-axis and this is the force vector. Theta z is gonna act within that yellow plane and it's gonna start from the z-axis and it's going to end where the force is. So this value right here is theta z. And there you go. Those are our three direction angles for a force in 3D space. So very quickly, we can do a numerical example down here where I said that if force, if the force vector is 320 newtons, and then I said uh, theta x was equal to 60 degrees, theta y was equal to 45 degrees, and theta z was equal to 120 degrees. So notice that uh, theta z is more than 90 degrees. So this force vector isn't acting entirely in this quadrant of the three-dimensional space. Remember, theta z is taken from the z-axis to that force within this plane. So theta z is gonna act more like that. So uh, this force factor f is actually going off in some other direction. And that's gonna be important because one of our components is gonna be negative. So if we took these values and we simply plug them into our equations for each of the scalar quantities, we could get f of x is equal to 320 newtons, right? The magnitude of f times cosine of 60, and this gives us a positive value of 160 newtons. Now for f of y, very similar, is going to be 320 newtons times the cosine of 45 degrees, and this gives us a value of 226 newtons. And then finally for f of z, we get 320 newtons times the cosine of 120 newtons, and that gives us a value of negative 160 newtons. And so that sort of makes sense. The x and the y components are positive, so in this diagram, the x component is gonna be in this direction, the y component is gonna be in this direction, but this z component is not going to be along this direction, it's actually going the other way into the negative z axis. And so for completion, I can write that this force vector f of 320 newtons has a component of 160 newtons in the i direction plus 226 newtons in the j direction uh, minus 160 newtons in the k direction, in the z direction, the negative z direction in this case. And there you go. That is our answer.